Welcome back to the shrine. On the altar today are parts from the hand-me-downs of the industry are being resurrected. You know the bottom line of any tragedy is when the protagonist moves from ignorance to discovery and he will learn of his flawed assumptions. I've had one too many of these moments in my life when I cobbled together something uh, thinking easy will do it and realized later that it was not working due to my own fault. So what do we got here? This is a cover from my CNC spindle motor and inside the cover there's a fan that circulates air when I bought the machine I realized that it was packed with dirt so much that the fan blades were stuck shut they were not spinning so I kinda took it apart cleaned it and put it back together and uh, when I was trying to run the CNC um, it was basically giving me a fault when it was changing the tool I called out Fryer they said check the leveling I'm like okay so um, I moved ahead and I looked inside see if I can uh, find any faults uh, with the encoder here okay so this is the encoder it resides inside this cover sits on the end of the spindle shaft and this is basically a positioning sensor that tells the computer where the shaft is uh, axially uh, what is the relative axial position of the shaft also this gives feedback about the speed so the first thing is required when we want to orient the tool for the tool changer so it's in a proper position for the tool changer to do the, the, the changing of the tool and then the second is required when we want to keep the speed at the specific uh, you know uh, value so we want to go for example 5000 rpms and uh, it's got a, a feedback loop this is the cover okay this is the part number you can see LHE 408 1024 so 1024 divisions on a circle and uh, this is made by Sumtac which company is not around anymore they were bought by someone else so I reached out to that company and I inquired about a uh, diagram or drawing or something along those lines uh, with which I would be able to uh, troubleshoot this and after I filled out some forms uh, they gave me the drawing and the drawing basically specifies the slew speed which is a maximum speed at 5000 ripoms now this CNC is actually running at 8,000 ripoms and uh, so I think two things are going on the first one is uh, they only use this at low speed for positioning and then at high speed they do a, a different game but what I wanted to do first is figure out if the signal that is coming from this encoder is a good signal so what I did first is I drove this with my hand cordless drill uh, which basically I was playing with it battery died so then I thought I'm gonna rig it up and so that's where the first error came in I don't know if you guys can see it but I am driving it with a 280 size motor and when I turn it on the signal was just crappy it was beyond crappy and so um, strike one is that I used a brushed motor so when you use a brushed motor the brushes are gonna make um, sparks which is basically plasma and it's gonna talk like radio frequency high pitch telling these cables that hey dudes I'm here you wanna run some current I'm giving you some extra current if you want and so uh, what is going on here there's a 12 volt 5 volt power supply from a computer 
I'm using, as you can see, the uh, 5 volt end here and that is feeding into this cover which is connected to the encoder. So the encoder is being powered by this power supply. Now I have a second power supply here that gives me AC and so this wire comes out gives me AC I got a bridge here okay and that bridge provides DC 15 volts something volts and then I have a dimmer here I built this for different purpose years ago but what this dimmer does it will adjust the AC voltage coming out and then basically the the AC voltage from the secondary coil here is being rectified and that drives the motor. Strike two is that the motor doesn't have a capacitor on it that would suppress some of that noise. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it on. Um, I've got a oscilloscope set up. I've got three channels enabled. So the first two channels looking at A and B and then the third channel is looking at uh, channel Z which is channels A and B uh, basically supposed to give a square wave and then uh, depending on how many um, divisions the uh, encoder has and then channel Z is going to have one square wave per revolution. So I'm thinking that for high speed, Fryer is using channel Z only. And then for low speed, they are using channel A and channel B. That basically gives the direction of rotation um, and also the speed. So this power supply, I'm going to plug that in. Okay, so it's running. So this is being powered, and you can see when I when I nudge it a little bit, I move it. You can see the signal is moving on the oscilloscope. Okay, so it's a pretty stiff. It, it's got one arm here, which is made out of thin stainless steel, and that's supposed to hold it from rotating. But it's so sensitive that even if I move it a little bit. See, I just move it with my hand a little bit. You can see on the signal right away. Okay, so this one is for the motor. And I'm going to turn dimmer. And you can see the motor is going to come alive. Maybe I need to push it. Come on, motor. Be a nice motor. Okay, let's push it again. This is on. Okay, she's running. So inside there you can see the sparks going. And the signal is noisy as hell. So I was trying to adjust the signal. You can see, first of all, the signal has a lot of high frequency components on it which I can do some filtering with the uh, oscilloscope and I can get rid of that but it also has this ringing you can see that the signal is ringing at the beginning and at the end so I can adjust the speed I can turn the pot adjust the speed and what I'm doing is I'm triggering the signal by the Z, the signal Z, and you can see uh, the motor is just uh, surging, it goes up and down. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it off and just power everything down. So, this obviously didn't work. Um, initially, I had this cable, which is this is the motor cable laying close to the power cable of the encoder and uh, so when these cables are parallel like that the AC that is running in this one despite that you know you have um, despite that you have uh, 
diodes here and the diodes are rectifying so you would think that this end is AC and then this is DC really these cables also run AC and they they uh, act like a uh, antenna so why these cables are running AC because we have a commutator inside the motor and that is a rotating switch and so as the DC current flows in these wires there's going to be a strong AC component in it so that DC is going to surge and these are going to act as antennas and that basically will affect the voltage in any other wire that's near uh, near it so I thought I need to uh, change my game so I did change my game okay I had a couple of these uh, RC motors laying around got a few RC planes up there and you can see them most of them use these brushless motors so the brushless motor has a controller and this is an ESC which is called brushless ESC and uh, this controller is fairly simple it's got a positive negative uh, voltage going into it it's got three phase coming out and then it's got an extra pigtail wire going here so what this does it can provide five volts uh, to the uh, uh, radio and it's also looking for a PWM signal coming from somewhere so I had to implement that with, uh, with an uh, Arduino so all it does I just got five volts coming into this potentiometer it's a 50k potentiometer goes on both sides and then the wiper is gonna get a feedback back to the Arduino so the Arduino is reading the voltage from this uh, potentiometer and it's basically based on that voltage is, is creating a signal that's coming out through the uh, uh, pin 9 okay and that is being fed into the ESC so uh, this is my previous box I'm just using the voltage supply from here and then on this guy I can set up you know what voltage I want so I was looking for 12 volts you can hear that the ESC started up just like when you start the airplane and that sound tells us that it's ready to go so if I go here and I turn the potentiometer it is gonna get the motor running okay and I can go and I can change the speed of the motor so the next thing is to hook this motor up with that encoder and then get rid all that DC motor brushed garbage and give it a run with this one and see how it runs I swapped out the motor I installed this one first um, I think it's got a bent shaft and then I installed this one and you can see if I turn it on motor is running and then the waveform is noisy as heck one thing I found is that when I'm moving this wire here look at the signal signal is going kind of haywire so there's definitely something going on with this thing you see if I move the wire the signal is gonna go and misbehave so I think that's what I'm dealing with and I can go and scale it out like that you can see it's noisy so I'm gonna go and move the wire again you see it's like completely screwing up all the signal so first I need to figure out what's going on with the oscilloscope get rid of some of that high 
frequency noise there on the signals. Looks like it's a purple, because the purple is channel Z. So that is a channel that repeats once in a revolution. And you can see when it's not moving that fizzy stuff will go away. But even if I go and just move it with my hand, you can see that thing is coming back. So something's wrong with this encoder. I'm not sure if it's repairable. Uh, maybe it's just one of those little solder joints here that is not working. So you can see the wire is just soldered in. Aha! Look at that! Look what I found. See that wire right there? See this wire right here? That green wire is just flopping in the breeze. So that most likely broke off from this end. Uh, from the PCB. So what I need to do is get rid of this guy here and then re-solder the wires. Now in the same time I also want to remove this whole assembly from the cover and uh, create a, some kind of cover for the inside so this is insulated. It's gonna be a fun job. I had a crazy idea. I hooked up channel 1 to the power supply. This is an old computer power supply. I got the ground on a ground lead and then I have the probe on a 5 volt. Um, this one is probably from the early 2000s, made in China, 330 watts. And as you can see, uh, it's not a nice and clear signal. It's pretty much everywhere. So right here, this shows the scale, 200 millivolts so one vertical division on the scale is 200 millivolts so this is um, centered here so you can see some of this ripple goes minus 200 to plus 200 millivolts so that's 500 millivolts so the next thing is uh, I'm gonna look into another power source this is my magical box I use for data acquisition it's got a power supply here, it's got a voltage controller, um, basically that feeds voltage into these data acquisition boxes and uh, these have some kind of filtering, um, some kind of passive filtering uh, built into them. So what I did is I hooked up the scope to the output here. So this is the this is basically this side is the input that's where voltage comes in and then the data goes out and then these this is the end where it will provide a fixed 5 volt um, excitation to the strain gauge and that is a, a clear signal what I understood um, I never measured the signal, this is the first time I'm measuring it, so you can see the probe is put on the positive and then this is the ground. And this is how the signal looks, so you might remember on a previous one I had about 400 millivolts from peak to peak, so this, the scale on this one is 200 millivolts, you can see it fits into 200 millivolts and it's a pretty uniform signal. I can um, magnify that and you can have a better look at the signal.